Hello YouTube, welcome to another Swiss Army Knife project video. Last week I improvised an oil press with my Venture knife. And with this press I tried to press out the oil from walnuts and this worked quite well. And as I had this amount of oil, I came up with the idea to make an oil lamp or an oil lantern. And now, one week later, I still think this is a good idea, so let's do it. About two years ago, I made a winter overnight in the improvised shelter here in the forest. And for that, I bought two of these oil lamps. And I remember, already in the, in the late afternoon, it was super dark in the forest. And I needed light for all activities, for cooking, for making my beds and stuff like this. And I was super happy with the burning time and with the light from these lamps. But these lamps are much too big for, for carrying them in the backpack. And they are too much fragile because the glass can break or the oil can leak. So uh, this is a good solution for a stationary situation. But if you are on the go, if you, are, if you want to be mobile, doesn't work. That's why I want to show you how you can improvise a much smaller and a much more robust DIY version of a oil lantern. And this lantern can't leak because you can close the lantern with this lid and this lid is 100% tight. So you can put this in your backpack. And as I already said, my aim is to run this oil lamp with the oil I made with my improvised oil press. The link to the video how you can make such an oil press you find here and in the description box below. To improvise such a long turn, you need a small jam jar with a lid, like this or like this, so the exact size doesn't matter. Further, you need a piece of a wire. So in this case, it is one millimeter for the handle and for the weak holder inside. That you can bend the wire. It would be a big advantage if you have a pliers. Here I have one from a Swiss Army knife or from a Swiss tool. I go with the Swiss Army knife. As wick, you can use a twisted piece of cotton like this or you can also twist tissue or you can take natural fiber cord and you twist it to a wick. If you just want to use natural materials you find in the nature you can use stinging nettle fibers. In the description box below you find a link where I show you how this works. And last but not least, of course, you need oil. Later in this video, I will show you a fantastic trick how you can run such an oil lamp if you have just a little amount of oil like me. Inspiration to craft such a mini lantern I get from my friend James Bender from the YouTube channel Waypoint Survival. James used a little candle, a tea light for inside, and I try to run this mini lantern with oil. And by the way, Waypoint Survival is one of my favorite bushcraft and survival channels. So please check out James' channel, the link you find in the description box below. And now I would say, let's start with the project. So now I try to make a little bit contrast that you can see how I bent the wire. I hope this works. So, so here's the wire. And the first thing I do is I make an eyelet like this. Next step is I twist this eyelet like this. Then I take the jam jar and go around the neck like this. 
and on the upper side side of this eyelet I make a second eyelet. This is here. And this and this I twist again. Now I bend the wire around the neck of the jar and twist together the two ends. Be careful, not too much, like this. Now I cut away the wire. One. second and I bend it down. With the rest of the wire I bend a handle like this. Then I make two hooks at the end. One hook, second hook. Now I go in Then I close the hooks. One. And the second. So. And don't make the handle too short because right above the flame it is very hot. So next step is to make the wick holder. For that I take another piece of wire and a little branch which has a little bit more diameter than the wick. Then take the wire, hold it and then I wrap around the wire like this. So. And the idea is that this spiral hold the wick more or less upright. Now I bend a bow around this spiral and this should hold the wick more or less in the center. Yes. So now it looks like this. In the center is the spiral who holds the wick upright. Here is the bow who holds the wick in the center. And now I can put that in the jam jar like this. So and now you can define on which high you want to have the flame. So, because of the wind protection, I like to have it maybe on, on, in, in the half of the high, like this. And now I bend it here over the rim, like this. After this bend, I make a second hook. Like this, then I can cut the wire right here. Hoppla. So the finished wick holder looks like this. Here you can put in the wick. Like this. And the end of the wick is about in the half of the high of the jam jar here. Now I take the lid 
and make a little hole in the side here. Not here, on the flat, on the side. For that I take the reamer. So. If the hole is done, you can hang the hole in this hook, like this. And now you can't lose the lid and you have something like a reflector. If you are at home, you can even polish the inside that this flat reflect even more. So, and don't worry about the hole. So if you put out the flame, you can take away the hook from the rim like this. Now you can close the jam jar and this is 100% water or oil tight and you can put this in your backpack. And now I want to show you the trick how you can run such an oil lamp with just a minimal amount of oil. And for that put a little bit oil, maybe one centimeter oil in the jam jar. Like this. And now it is important that the wick can soak up the oil until he is totally soaked with oil. And that can take two or three minutes. Now you can see that the oil level is much too deep in comparison with the end of the wick. If I would ignite the wick now, the flame would be much too big. But because the wick is soaked with oil and because water, here inside is water, is heavier than oil, I can lift the oil until the point that the wick, the wick looks maybe five, six, seven millimeters over the, over the oil level. And this is perfect. Now I put in water. Even a bit more. And now I can take out the wick and ignite it. As you can see, I had a little bit problems to ignite the wick. Next time I wouldn't pour the water direct over the wick. Better take the wick out, fill the water in and put the wick back. This trick with the water I learned from the YouTube channel Woodsbound Outdoors. The link to his channel you find in the description box below. I like the small lantern and uh, I would recommend try it out. This is a super fun project. If I have enough time next week, I would like to improve my press a little bit and, and it would be super interesting to find out if I can press out oil also from other nuts and seeds, for example from beech nuts or from, from uh, acorns or from hazelnuts or from uh, stinging nettle seeds, stuff like this. So my friends, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next Friday. Ciao!